Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Genshin Impact. It is time to do whatever this is. I saw they added a new event that only has like five days, so I need to go do that. So we're going to Fontaine! I'll catch up. Onward to war. Cutscene time? Stackity snap, printy printy printy, stackity stack stack stack. It's my internal monologue all the time. Me, anytime I do any boring task, it's just me in my own head. Whoa, those two are kind of big deals. Kind of? Uh, hey, you two, can I take your picture? No. Cost money. Huh? Uh, does she mean us? Why does she want our picture? If it's for commercial use, we can charge her for it. <laughs> <laughs> Guess we better get used to the celebrity treatment, huh? Can't blame the fans for wanting a photo <laughs> of their heroes. <laughs> if it's for commercial use, we can charge her. Hey, um, if this is for anything besides your own personal use, then we're legally allowed to charge you. Wait, what would they call it here? An appearance fee? Photo shoot fee? Absolutely! It's just an honor to be able to photograph the Ace Adventurer duo. How does one and a half million more sound? Alright, that's acceptable. Uh, sure, that sounds fine! Paimon? <laughs> How much did you say again? One and a half million? Why are we mimicking each other? It's a lot of more for just one photograph. Maybe a little too much. Are we really worried about that? Snap away takes a photo of life. You guys are overreacting. This measly one and a half mil is just the start. If you're interested in working with me as a photographer, you could potentially be taking home anywhere up to nine figures. Nine? Snap some snaps and stack those stacks. I'm fucking sorry. Nine? Nine figures? That's... Uh, wait. Every thousand is three figures, plus one for the one, so one million, that's seven, plus two is ten million, a hundred million, a hundred million? Yeah, this all sounds too crazy, even for Paimon to fall for. Even for Paimon to fall for. What kind of racket are you running here? Are you even planning for on Paimon. flashing a couple of famous faces to con innocent people? Damn, Paimon's so aggressive. Con innocent people? <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Wait, is that what we're doing? But you got it back to front. My goal here is to rid Tavat of everyone out there who's trying to con innocent people. Help me out, and there'll be a big bonus in it for you. Whoa, back up a little. It seems you skipped a couple of steps. How did you get from photography to crime fighting? I also question how we got from photography to crime fighting. Well, it all has to do with an important problem in law enforcement that often gets overlooked. Target recognition. Common sense says that if Gardamex want to fight crime, the first thing they need to do is identify who's a criminal and who isn't, right? Seems makes sense. But what happens when a Gardamex mistakes an honest citizen for a criminal, or sees someone brandishing a weapon in public but fails to flag them as a potential threat? Then you've got a huge problem. That is the problem with robots. Think of the poor fisherman whose fishing rod gets mistaken for a spear, or the crafty crook who carries around a metal pipe to club his victims with, but dismissed as a regular plumber. Is that what happens here? Okay, fair enough. You're kind of making sense now. Great. Okay, so let's say I disguise myself as a cat or a dog or a finch or a pigeon, or maybe even a blubber beast, because why the heck not? Uh, so I'm walking around the city streets like an escaped amusement park employee and a Gardamex sees me. How do you think it would respond? I like how all the other animals are normal names, dog, cat, finch, pigeon, and then blubber beast instead of just calling it a seal. Sorry, how do we get to music parts? Oh, that's cheating! A Gardamax not gonna do anything to some cute little critter! Also, what kind of blubber beast would even want to come to the city anyway? Bingo! Right answer. Gardamax are incapable of registering cats, dogs, finches, pigeons, and, of course, blubber beasts as potential targets. 
their image recognition system actually ignores them completely. Well, that sounds dangerous, it too. It's actually fairly logical if you think about it. Removing all the near-zero risk entities from the target database boosts performance in most situations. But here's a quote from a recent report in the Steambird. Several keen-eyed thieves who noticed a flaw in the Gardamex detection systems disguised themselves as blubber beasts during the commission of their crimes. Fair. Completely blind to the would-be blubber beasts, the Gardamex made no attempt to intervene in the thefts committed by the gang. Those crafty crooks. Wait, so this actually happened? And the Gardamex really didn't catch them? Okay, that's pretty gutsy, but also kind of horrifying. What if they get bored of petty theft and move on to something even worse? They could get away with anything. They could exactly. kill them. And that's why we have to fight these criminals in the domain of technology. It's turned into an ongoing tug of war between their disguises and our image recognition capabilities. And I, Lapine Pauline, specialist in graph adversarial technology, am determined to do my part towards a crime-free future for Fontaine. Currently, I'm in the process of collecting sample images. Once I have a large enough pool, I'll use that to develop a simple but powerful and highly accurate image recognition algorithm that runs on a small graphical processing module. Any clockwork mecha installed with this module will instantly be able to recognize people wearing disguises and accurately assess the criminal threat they pose. And, if all goes to plan, the Palais Mermonia will jump at the chance to have these installed on every Gardamech in the city. It's the business opportunity of a lifetime. I like your funny words, Magic Man. Paimon's getting deja vu. Let me guess, you're a homebody researcher who prefers to stick to the city, limiting your potential sample size. And the reason you want to work with us is because we can go out into the wild and help you get all the other photos you need, right? Wow. <laughs> right again. Down to the last detail. It sounds like the Ace Adventurer duo has seen it all before. Yeah. What do I you know. say? Join my project, become a graph adversarial technology specialist, and together we can expose every costume defender in Fontaine. Crucially, with your help, we can build a solid graph adversarial tech pipeline and take Fontaine's technology and law enforcement capabilities to the next level. Everybody wins. Hmm. This does sound like it's for a good cause. Forget the moral. We can't stand by and do nothing. There are criminals out there giving Blubber Beast a bad name, and that's something my mom won't stand for. But I want the Mora still. Great. And just like that, welcome to the team. Okay, take this. It's an image recognition sample collector. It contains recording and analysis equipment that I designed myself and comes complete with a user guide. I've already looked through lots of images from all over to determine the key features of the samples I'd like to collect. All you need to do is work your way through the guide, get the pictures, and bring them back to me. Simple. Let's get this show on the road, everyone. We must win the tug of war against evildoers and score some big ticket orders from the Palais Mermonia. During the event, use the sampling camera to take pictures of targets that the uh, player points out to obtain special sample. You can take a total of 10 shots per day. These will reset the next day. What the fuck? You can exchange samples with your friends during this event. Oh, we can work together to be paparazzis. That's interesting. That's, that's wild. Opponents with wing like structures. Okay. Opponents with wing-like structures. What the fuck am I supposed to know what that means? I don't even know what opponents would count as having wing-like structures. I'm trying to think. What would count? Oh well. Let's continue the main quest, and I'll just take pictures of anything I think has wing-like structures, because my main Archon quest... What was I doing? When I was a little 
lot. We're gonna do this one. We'll go back to our main Archon quest. We gotta, because we gotta co complete Sumero. I wanna see Fontaine eventually, because I love Furia. A lot. Okay. Do, 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 Hello. Catherine, we're here! Oh, um, you are the other Catherine, right? That's right. I suppose I'm the other Catherine in your mind. Hi, Sakura. <laughs> the other Catherine? <laughs> Can't we just call her Nadia? <laughs> Identity. We're not that secret yeah, about it. We're kind of idiots. Right. We cannot fully rule out the chance that the meetup tonight is just a trap. God, that voice coming out of Catherine's so weird still. If something were to happen, my existence may be the only trump card we'll be able to play. After all, the Academia should still be unable to confirm the existence of my consciousness in the outside world. Yep, yep, exactly. Just How are you, Sakura? Thinking. Nadia... I'm confused. Whatever. Why can't Nadia just can't talk to me in my head? Mm, anyway, enough about that. Let's just make sure to be on our guard. I'm good. Thank you for asking. I gotta complete the Sumeru Archon quest so I can get to Fontaine finally because I love Farina already, and I need Us? to get to I need to get to Fontaine. What do you feel is off? It's quiet. Too quiet. It's I always wanted to say that. Of the night. Of course it's, it's daytime, you liar. You're not Paranoid, are you? It's the middle of the day! No, I think he's right. It really is a lot quieter. It's like 12 o'clock in the afternoon! If you look around, there seems to be fewer people on the streets. I'm not there's sure if nobody this is the case on the streets. For the entire city, though. There's, there's nobody. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe Sataria figured out a way to not only distract the guards, but also to get everyone to go to sleep early, just so we can exchange the documents in peace. I also can't quite I'm on your optimism is inspiring. A little off. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and meet her as we planned. Well, regardless, as long as you're here with us, Paimon feels a little safer. Why do you feel safer with her here? I'm a warrior. Can Nadi even fight as Catherine? Can Catherine fight? Catherine's a weird robot. I guess she could fight. Hi. Huh. There really aren't many people out right now. Let's hope it'll be this quiet in front of the Academia, and that Sataria managed to distract all the guards. Distract all the guards. gonna die oh now it's the middle of the night what are all these people doing here at this hour of the i night? have concerns i have questions comments and concerns mostly concerns and questions ah, the triumphant hero returns at last and to a rather spectacular welcome even if i do say so myself oh no it's a twink the outcast expelled from the academia the outcast Although these days they tend to call me the Doctor. The Doctor? <laughs> Wait, is he the one that experimented on Cole? Researcher friend, she has oh no, he's hot! With some basic caution, she could have discovered. William Fancy son, he does kind of have a big nose. Clearly, she lacks the degree of rigor expected of a true scholar. How do you see out of that mask, homie? Can I can I ask how I you see? Up some city. Well, time to kill what everyone in Sumeru. Well, obviously my I control. I simply made some minor adjustments to their Akasha terminals. Now they can deposit information directly into the subconscious. That sounds bad. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. Well, that's kind of accurate. I kind of have done that. He, he smells me. Yeah, I mean, he has the big nose for it. 
And now it seems they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. That being said, his design is super clean. I would not be mad if he was a character I could summon. Uh, beat them up. You need to get out of here. Okay. That guy's a Fatui Harbinger. We can't just leave you here. Nor can I abandon the people of Samaru. Oh, shit. She can use her power through Catherine? Just not. Oh, she override their terminals. Oh, shit. Well, I can just go kill him now. Thank you for. Why didn't you tell me you could do that? I can just go kill him now. Don't worry. We'll meet again outside of the city. But I can just kill him now. But, but I could just kill him now. You, you stopped the people. I see. You appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. But I could kill him now. To possess such a powerful mind, you must be the god of wisdom. If she just headbutted him, I'd give all the. I'd, I'd, give, I'd give this game all my money if she just fucking headbutted him. Why am I running like a bitch when I- like, she solved the problem! She stopped the people! Why am I running like a bitch? I fought a dragon! Technically, I fought multiple dragons now. This should be far enough. Whew. Paimon needs to catch your breath first. You don't run. Uh, is Nahida going to be okay? Probably not. We only made it out because of her. Yeah, like cowards. Paimon wasn't counting on running into a new harbinger here. Let alone such a high-ranking one. Well, we killed the last one. I was number two. So scary. We literally killed the last one. Well, the Raiden Shogun the did, I guess, but... The doctor. Remember, Tainari told us about him. Sataria did say that someone who once got expelled from the Academia came back recently. And that even the sages are weary of him. Yep. Sounds like she must have been talking about the doctor. We didn't really underestimate. I feel like I could have taken him. Now that the doctor's in the picture, we're no longer just dealing with the academia. They're in cahoots with the Fatui. Okay, everyone we've ever fought has been in cahoots what with the Fatui. What the after this time? Another Gnosis? Yes. Literally everyone we've ever fought has been in bed with the Fatui, so like... Yeah, things would be a lot easier with Nahida's help. I would be worried too, some of that covering on their faces, we'll that's fair. Again outside of the city. We can't just keep waiting around, right? Well, we've been here for five minutes. Let's let's give her a second. Uh, you mean? Oh, yeah, Tigari. Wasn't he invited by the sages to work on some project when we were staying with him in the Vidia Forest? That has to be the same project. Even though he turned it down at the time, he might still know something. I love Tignari. There's no time to lose. Let's go to Gundarvaville. Gundarvaville. I kind of want his Plague Doctor mask thing, though. His, like, crow Plague Doctor mask thing. It looks really cool. I would like it. I want one. Well, I guess the closest teleport point's there. To Gandarvaville. I'm happy to see Tignari again. Maybe I'll get to see Kole again, too. I do love Kole. Ah! I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Tactical nuke! <laughs> Worth it. Uh, <laughs> Shower me with oh, A bitter pill to swallow. Cut. Nice and spicy. It was so unnecessary. It was so deeply unnecessary, but it was fun. <laughs> this is why Noelle's a tank. Why Noelle's the best character in the game. Blizzard! Where? Got you. I can't wait till Ito comes out. Next month I become an Ito main when Ito comes out in December. I think it's December. I hope it's December. My memory's fucking dark. Hold it right there. Oh. A blonde haired traveler and a floating fairy. We've got you, alright. Take a look around. You've fallen right into our trap. Oh no, five guys. Whatever will I do? You come here to arrest us? The core of 30? We're nothing like those government lapdogs. Oh, good, then I can kill you. don't even get scraps for their work. We are an elite brigade that commands the highest commission rate in all of Sumeru. 
We're here on the orders of a client known only as the Outcast. The Outcast? An Outcast from the Academia? Why did- How many cool titles does the Doctor need? But why wouldn't the Doctor just send the Fatui after us? Still wasting time on idle chit-chat. We'll shut you up soon enough. Get them! How did the doctor know where I was going? Nadia doesn't even know where I'm going. Why am I using the force? Oh no, four guys. Whatever will I do? Seems like an emergency. Oh no, Excalibur! As a dutiful maid would. Be a shame if I just beat you to death with this great sword, wouldn't it? Come on, you guys have the highest commission rate, I thought. I thought you guys had the highest commission rate. This is a maid. New punch. Let the world Come here. Come here. It sure feels over. That's a good night shoot. Makes you miss the game. Yeah, it's a good game. Sometimes I lose focus on it every once in a while, but it's a good game. I like to come back to it. I'll catch up. I'd like to point out nobody on my team right now is officially like a fighter. Noelle's a maid. Baizu's a doctor. Fiorina's, I guess, technically the Hydro Archon, but she's just a theater kid. And then Zhongling is a, just a chef. No, no one on my team is a fighter. <laughs> is that what elite mercenaries are like? They didn't hurt us, Paimon. They're all dead. Yeah. Looks like we'll have to keep our guards up. They're all fucking but dead. But this doctor guy seems like a pretty tough opponent. He knew exactly where to set up an ambush. Did he predict that we would try to find Kainari? Ugh. Going up against smart people is tough. Anyway, let's keep going. Well, that was easy. Sag! Right, I can talk to the dog. Take good care of the doggy squad. I love this dog. This... There's a danger thingy here, and I don't know where the fuck it is. Oh well. Oh, I don't care. Anyway. Whee! You sell the mushrooms I need, don't you? Yeah, I need these stupid things. Thank you. Anyway. Tignari! Oh, Kolei, wife. She's adorable. Hello, oh, Kolei. It's the Traveler and Paimon. What are you two doing back here? Oh, you know, terrorism. Kolei, it's nice to see you again. Are you doing all right? I, to be honest, I'm not doing too well. My Elazar has been progressing at a faster rate lately. I'm finding it harder to complete more intricate tasks. No! As a result, Master Tainari is taking me off the patrol schedule. He will only allow me to stay here and coordinate other people's tasks. Well, that's fair, though. Oh, Kale! You'll get, you'll get killed out in the jungle. Speaking of Tainari, did he go off on patrol? We're here to talk to him! Oh, Master Tainari? He just left the Avidia Forest a little while ago. He was headed to Party's DI. Huh? He left? But isn't Tainari always saying that he never wants to leave the Avidia Forest? He even turned down the Sage's invitation. What? I thought it was weird too. Master Tainari okay. always prioritizes his work as a forest watcher above everything. He almost never leaves his post. He left in a hurry this time, though. Of course the second I need him is the time he decides to leave. No, I only found out that he left through a message he left behind. 
He also made sure to delegate all his tasks using a schedule. <sighs> to leave in such a hurry? I guess he had something urgent to take care of. Hmm. Master Tainari originally studied in the Amorta Darshan of the Academia. And part of Stiai is something like the Amorta's research base. Many rare shrubs and grasses have been planted there for research. Shrubs! I know that before he became a forest watcher, Master Tainari once spent a long time conducting research at Party Stiai. A research base, huh? Gotta wonder what kind of research Tainari just decided to work on all of a sudden. Oh, we don't have a lot of time, so let's go look for him at Party Stiai. Uh, don't worry, I'm fine. No. I'm used to living with Elazar by now. No. If you run into Master Tainari, please send him my regards. Take care of yourself. You're small. I will beat you up. Got it. Will do. See you later, Kale. I care about you. I will fix your terminal illness. Catherine is busy helping a customer. Damn it! <laughs> Stupid. Busy thing. What quest do I have to fix? My quests are a mess, and I'm aware that's my fault, but I also don't care. Well, let's go do the side quest. Catherine! We have to do a side quest! Hello, I am here for... Add Astra Abasquask. Why are you both staring at me? There's something significant you would like to inquire about. Uh, that's so funny. It's like a season adventure already. Why doesn't she... Did Nadia break her brain? Have any questions for the guild, please? Did Nadia break her brain? Because why doesn't she remember me? Okay, so we broke- I broke Catherine, I guess. That was all that quest was, was to talk to her being broken? Well, that was- okay, I don't know why that- okay. Why would- that wasn't even a quest! That was just- okay. Whatever. That- that wasn't even a quest. Lux, come here. Doggo, quit! Shut up. No, you don't need to be a brat. This is why you got banished up here, is because you're loud. Stop being a brat. Yeah. Soon you're a brat, bad things happen to you. I'll catch up. Strike a pose. A bitter pill to swallow. Steady as stone. Yeah. Murder. Come to mind the side effects. <laughs> A dutiful maid woman. Time to shine. The doctor will see. The doctor will see. Yep. A bitter pill to swallow. Side effects. I must leave no stone unturned. I need those nucleus things anyway. Delicious, delicious nucleus is. is Nuclei. Nuclear mimosas. I will give Sumeru credit. Sumeru is very pretty. I really hate all the caves that are in Sumeru. It makes exploring the wilderness really annoying, but the cities are fucking nice. Cities are pretty as hell. The caves annoy me, though. 
There's the fast travel thingy. Touch. Ignari, where are you at? Wait, look who it is! Nadia, how did you get here that fast? Nadia! Thank goodness you're okay. We were so worried about you. You haven't been reprogrammed by the doctor, have you? Hey, this was supposed to be a touching reunion, but you're ruining the moment. It's a possibility. Actually, it's very smart of the traveler to be wary of me right now. After all, the doctor has shown that his technology can apparently even control human minds. Plus, it's not like you could have known what happened after we split up and I was facing the doctor by myself. Even a pool of stagnant water after a torrential storm can occasionally pass as a patch of sky. Hmm. What? Kaimo feels like only the real Nahida could come up with such an obscure analogy. Yeah. Huh? But I wasn't trying to win your trust or anything. All I wanted was to clarify my point. I would die for Nahida. Well, we understand that point now. Please, Nahida, tell us more about what happened. Are those poor people all right? I would die for Nahida. When you left, I was still in the middle of restoring everyone's minds. Thankfully, when the doctor mentioned depositing information into the subconscious, he didn't mean engraving information into their minds. Instead, he did something closer to creating hallucinations. That was still within my power to fix. That's good. Luckily, I managed to finish my restorations and mind jump away from him just as he was about to capture me. Whew. What a relief. The doctor sure pulled out some hidden cards, but good thing we had Nahida with us. I wouldn't be relieved just yet. I gave away my true identity when I restored everyone's minds, which means we've lost another one of our trump cards. Also, the doctor is already an expert at modifying Akasha terminals. Maybe it's only a matter of time until he captures my consciousness inside the Akasha. No, I will kill him. Would that mean you'd no longer be able to jump between minds? Then how do we stop him? He's still at the Academia, so it's possible he already started messing with the Akasha. We kill him. Ugh. It feels like he's toying with us. What a nasty piece of work. We stab him with swords. The Doctor's combat ability alone is apparently enough to make him worthy of being number two of the Fatui. But we've beaten all the we other Fatui. We give up hope just yet. We stab him. Let's try to find another way to attack this problem. Like stabbing it. Actually, Nahida, how did you know we were trying to get to Party's DI? Have you been waiting for us? Yes, I have. I can see the Traveler's elemental energy, so I deduced your destination by looking at the direction you were moving in. You didn't come here for sightseeing, right? Did you find any leads? I'm looking for a furry. We're looking for a scholar we know. His name is Tainari, and the sages once tried to reach out to him. Why don't you come inside with us and see what we can find? Okay. Let's just hope we won't get him into trouble. Eh, Tignari's fine. He's a bro. I'll probably... We're almost definitely gonna get him into trouble, but that's fine. You're the god of wisdom. I'm pretty sure everyone has to help you legally. I think. I think that's like what being a citizen of Sumeru is, is that the god of wisdom has to help you. You're not Tignari. You're a pretty lady. You're not my furry. Traveler? It is you! Hi, Apasia. Ah, it's Apasia! Ah, oh, what a pleasant surprise. It's so nice to see the two of you again. Who's this? A friend. She's a scholar we met in the I can know people! When we last saw each other, she was still training in the... Uh, what's it called? Satyavada life? Oh, I see. That's right, we're old friends. Uh, you've come at just the right time. Ever since I've come here, hardly anyone has even talked to me. Apasia, you're way too excited about this. Actually, for you to leave the Avidia Forest means... Oh, you're not in training anymore? Wait, no. Did you already finish your training and reach Pari Porno Life? <laughs> what do you think? No. My consciousness has already managed to make contact with the Divine. <sighs> Nahida's like, I didn't talk to you! You did it? Congratulations! <laughs> it's 
so exhilarating to share this sublime joy with others at long last! When my consciousness made contact with the gods... Ah, what a supreme and unparalleled experience that was! That sounds incredible! Oh, all right. Uh, actually, please wait. I haven't forgotten my promise to you. Remember? I promised to help you understand what you saw from Ermansoul once I gained deeper insights. My current self has not only gained true insight, but I can even help you establish a direct connection to the consciousness of the divine. That sounds dangerous. You... you can do that? I've never heard of anything like that, but... If you want to give it a try, I'll do my best to protect your consciousness during the process. Hold on. I brought some spirit borneal with me. This is still a crucial part of the ceremony. Uh, we're using that incense again? Ah, oh, good, the drugs. All right. It's now. the good Kush! Hold my hand. I'll help you establish a pathway to connect your consciousness. Okay. Dad, it's the good Kush! This is the dollar store. How good could it be? Ready? Oh, the drugs are kicking in already. I know that obviously this is like actually me making a connection to the Ermin Soul Tree. The trails for me to finally understand. Oh, Wanderer. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. That's fair. You know, My he's... Fury will never be quelled. You do have anger issues. The first to betray me was a god. Your mom. My creator. My mother. Yeah, mom issues make you crazy. Valuing strength above all. She saw no worth in me and I was discarded. The second was a human. My family. My friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. Oh, jeez. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless oh. before his mortality, he broke his promise to me. Oh, Humans, they can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounce the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> oh, there's the cool hat! My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Wanderer, no. Then it will be empty. A blank slate and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> there is no need to fear. The pain will be brief. Your era is coming to an end. Ah. Well, that wasn't the Divine, that was Wanderer. What was that? Paimon saw it too. Did we actually just see the Balladeer's memories? Everything matches what we know about him. We don't know shit about him. But how is he connected to the Divine Consciousness that Hapasia was talking about? Well, you, you know. saw it, right? You felt it, right? Such a majestic God! Such a noble will! Such sublime emotion! That emotion was anger! Alas, shame. If only... If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart. Oh, oh great and merciful God. Please grant me forgiveness and salvation. He's not a god! He's a puppet! Now? I'm afraid this is no peri in a life, but rather... Wake up! Smacker! You! Why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? Because you're crazy. 
I Wake found up. divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? No, this is just some guy's mommy issues. Papaya. That's how I always thought everything should be. Wait. Have I... Already lost my mind? Kinda. Why don't you go lay down? Maybe you need a nap. Why, why don't you go take a nap? Okay, bye. You didn't tell me where Tignari is, though. Wait, something isn't right. Well, no shit. A lot of things aren't right. No one's here. And she's crazy. Oh. Are we under attack? Do I have to kill everyone again? I'll kill everyone again. I don't care. Why does the traveler move like a jump, like a cat? I like that, that the traveler still has the basic common sword in the cutscenes. It's so stupid that they didn't give me like at least like a more like a three-star sword or something. No, Catherine! No! No, you can't hurt Catherine. Or Nahida. Oh. Did we switch places? Am I in Nahida's body? Oh, jeez. I see you. Did Wanderer build a mecha? Why did he build a mecha? I mean, I'd build a mecha if I could. I can't really fault him. I would build a mecha. Oh, Tignari. At least I found him. Am I being carried? <sighs> okay, we finally lost him. Exclamation point! Wait, no. Something feels different. <gasps> You're back! Oh, the Traveler's back? Hi, Tignari. Nahida was controlling your body for a while. It seemed like she jumped over to you as an emergency measure right before the Catherine puppet was destroyed. That's fair. After that, Tignari heard the commotion and came over. He helped us defeat the mercenaries and then he ran with us all the way here. What? You swapped places? You mean your consciousness also went into Nahida's body? Yep. Wait, then where is Nahida's consciousness? Where is she now? Well, if I'm back, I assume she's back in I her body. I never imagined that an individual's consciousness could be transferred around like this. Had I not seen it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. I don't think this can be achieved with current human technology. Well, yeah, no shit. Also, while we were running, the consciousness in your body told me to pass on a message. She said, The doctor has found a way to trap my consciousness. So I can't journey with you anymore. But even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Shower of starlight? <gasps> no! He is trapped in the sanctuary of Sura's daughter for good this time! Was that message all she left for us? It's pretty vague. You were here! Why don't you know the message? You were fucking here! Oh, that makes sense! Since the doctor captured her, she won't be able to say anything without him knowing! She's being extra careful. Even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Yeah, but she didn't huh. understand that. I'm stupid. Everyone knows the moon illusions and lies are from the alchemical divination at the Subzeru's festival. Didn't Nahida use a starlight analogy before? It had something to do with Sataria. Starlight first, the people of the desert? Sure, I don't... Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Do you think Nahida was telling us to go find help in the desert? Sure, why not? But she isn't with us anymore. Uh, think we'll be okay? Paimon, you said Sanctuary of Suristhana, correct? Does this mean that this Nahida you're talking about, the consciousness who was occupying the Traveler's body, is... the Dendro Archon? Yep, sure do. Uh, your guess is correct. 
correct, but the situation's a bit complicated, so it's really hard for us to explain right now. That's all right. A scholar's curiosity doesn't need to be appeased right away. As for the complicated nature of the situation, <laughs> safe to say I have witnessed that for myself. Sure have. I've spent some time with you, and it looks like the Dendro Archon's also on your side. So, I trust you. I appreciate that, Thank man. Thank you, Tainari. Oh, actually, we came here to ask you a question. What do you know about the project that the sages have been working on? He's just gonna be like nothing. Uh, that. While I was indeed invited to join that project, the sages were always secretive about its scope and goals, so I eventually declined. All I know is that the project has something to do with the restoration of Ermansol. Huh? Did you see something when you were in Nahida's body? What? Do you have any evidence? Saw it and asked him God under Hmm. They're making him a god. Hmm. So that's what happened. That explains why Hapasia's symptoms were different from those of the other scholars who went mad. It's because she made contact with the consciousness of a new god who is still in the process of being born. Tainari, did you leave the Avidia Forest because of Hapasia? I did. I noticed Hapasia's mental anomalies, but since her symptoms were rather atypical, I secretly took her to Pardis D.I. and began searching for a way to return her to her normal self. If I didn't take action, Hapasia would have already been taken by the Matra to the desert, doomed to a life of exile at Aru Village. Now that you mention it, I knew the Academia has never thought particularly highly of Lesser Lord Kusanali, but... But I still didn't expect them to do something as arrogant as creating a new god. Looks like I made the right decision by not accepting their invitation. The Fatui are the, the Balladeer. We have two Fatui Harbingers in Sumeru. Sounds like we're in for a bad time. Yep, I'll have to kill them all. From your description, I don't think they've completed their project. There may still be room for us to intervene. Got it. But then. What is the connection between creating a new god and restoring Ermansol? Yeah, it feels like we're still nowhere close to figuring out the sage's goals. Right, we've pretty much gone over everything we need to know, so we should head out. How about you, Tainari? What are you going to do? I'll stay here for now. I still want to try a few more things to help Hapasia. Hapasia. If you're planning to go into the desert, Start by heading for Caravan Rebot. That'll be your fastest route. I've already been to the desert. Come find me here if there's anything else I can do to help. May the spirit of wisdom go with you. Thanks, Tainari. Hopefully, Hapasia will feel better soon. We're off then. Oh, my silly dog. Why are you whining? Why are you whining, doggo? What's wrong? What could possibly be bothering you? You're fine. Huh, doggo? Doggo, 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 doggo. You're so dramatic, doggo. Yes, you're being dramatic. Go lay down. the desert, huh? Oh, wow. Paima remembers hearing people call this the Wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of Greater Lord Rukadavata, right? Greater Lord Rukadavata. Enough gawking. Come on, follow me. Oh! Huh? I like them. Over here. Okay, I guess we're running. I like how he just shows up whenever he feels like. Oh, he's that way. Let's hurry up and follow him. Wonder what he's up to. Just 
It's really funny how Al Haytham just kind of shows up and is like, hi, and then he fails again. The... Where did he go? Uh, how did we lose him? They were just here a second ago. But I'm a ninja. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Uh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. That's okay. You were too careless. Oh, shut up. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. Thanks, Grumpy. I There's love no you, Grumpy. no need to thank me. I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. Because you're Grumpy? All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. Okay, Grumpy. You really get by on a scare, I'll hate them. I never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at Poor Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait, don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders! Paimon, don't be dumb. Oh. So you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Probably. Oh. Right, um, you do have a point. <laughs> I have no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. <sighs> and these days, you're more fascinating than anything the sages can offer. I love how bitchy he is, he's so hmm. funny. Not quite. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the divine knowledge capsule. Unfortunately, I've run into some difficulties. Oh, yeah? Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you and why you're so interesting. Because I'm a wizard? The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the divine knowledge capsule right in front of you. And upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed and you were lost in thought for quite some time. To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? I'm a Martian. Oh, Atham, you really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? So that's your answer. <laughs> well, I do work for the Academia after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close His to your His eyes chest. are so fucking cool. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of, you two are also headed to the desert? Sure I am. That's right. We have the same plan as you. But we don't really have any concrete goals at the moment. Then I'd suggest starting with Aru Village. It's the largest settlement in the desert, so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else. Well, would you like to head there together? It's always better to travel with someone you know. Let's go! Let's go, Grumpy. Who's a grumpy boy? Into the desert. Dun, da, dun, 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 dun. Taking a turn for the better. Nice and spicy.
the side effects. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, 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 you'll be back. So fun. Scorpion. I must leave no stone unturned. The scorpion did not deserve this. That was so not cool of me to do that. Homie did not deserve that. Subject. <laughs> Must climb higher. Someone needs assistance. I do have some. There you go. There you go, weird magic statue. Before us lies Aru Village, the safe haven of the desert folk. Whoa, this landscape is really something else. What a cool place! Let's go check it out! Cutscene. Waki 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 waki. Wow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, hi, Sino. No, bad Sayu. All right, Sayu's gonna try and kill me now. Oh damn, they're gonna go all anime on each other. Oh shit. Oh shit, they're going anime on each other! Damn, Sayu moves! Hey man. Sayu. Hey, I know your voice actor, man. Unless my memory fails me, we have barely spoken two words to each other before now at the Academia. Would you care to enlighten me as to when and how I invited the General Mahamacha's wrath? Oh, Haytham. General Mahamash is a pretty metal title. My judgment, just because you managed to escape my attack. <laughs> judgment? So that's how you'd characterize your actions here, is it? Or would elimination perhaps be a more accurate description? Well, I mean, it was Had elimination. I used my full strength, not even this traveler would have been able to stop me. That's fair. Though styled like an assassination. I sought only to ensure that my target would be unable to flee or resist. Standard practice for the Matra, as well you know. Seemed to me more like your own personal touch. He's pretty cool, I gotta admit. <laughs> Who is that, Al Haytham? Did you call him General Mahamatra? Yes. General Just wanna give him head pass? That's fair. Of all the Matra at the Academia. He's a formidable hunter and the ultimate nightmare for any who have committed academic crimes. You seem to have placed a lot of trust in Al Haytham, to the point of blocking an attack for him. If I were you, I'd never choose to side with him. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. I have been pursuing this scribe for a long time. 
I urge you, stand back and do not seek to defend him any longer. Otherwise, there will be consequences. I mean, I don't necessarily trust Al Haytham that much, but I also can't let you execute him right in front of me when he can be useful because he has big brain. Has Al Haytham done something wrong? Hyman doesn't think he's as bad as you've made him out to be. I need him to save the child. I waste my breath explaining things. Al Haytham, I saw it during our fight. Take it out. The divine knowledge capsule you're hiding on your person. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Oh, damn, he knows. Hmm. He's got sharp Very eyes. Very perceptive of you. Nothing escapes Amatra's senses. Where does he what? hide that? The divine knowledge capsule? Didn't it fall into the Matra's hands in Port Ormos? No wonder you speak with such confidence, Sino. But I must admit, I'm very curious. What does this capsule mean to you? And why, as General Mahamatra hey, of Academia, are you all alone in the desert? General as far Mahamatra. as I'm aware, the other Matra have been speculating about your disappearance. Have you been given a mission that's, let's say, morally dubious? I'm good, how are you? If I was the real target of your mission, what was stopping you from simply using your authority and resources to judge me within the walls of the Academia? <laughs> oh, Sino Man. I should have known you'd be difficult to deal with. <laughs> what should we do, Traveler? Paima feels like we can't trust either of them. Let's beat them both up. <clears throat> well, look at you two. Oh, hi, Dan. tough and self-righteous over there. I am tough and self-righteous. I am tough and self-righteous. Don't be like that. You're alive. That's good. Great! Finally, someone that we can trust! You gotta help us out here. Otherwise, these two are gonna start fighting again! Yeah, sure looks that way. Two giants from the Academia duking it out once and for all. Not something you get to see every day, that's for sure. Listen, I know you academic types love to fill up your big brains with self-righteous morality your big and brains. lord your empty rules and virtues over each other. But how dare you bring your petty disputes into the safe haven of Aru village. Been a long couple weeks, I'm sorry. Seems like someone's gonna have to beat some sense into your thick skulls until you finally learn to respect these grounds. Uh-oh. <sighs> now it's a three-way fight. Okay. Uh... Whose side am I on now that it's a three-way fight? Hey, did either of you hear a word I just said? Whoosh. The wind did. Thanks, God. Ooh, what's Whoosh. Going on? The wind's so strong. Is this a sandstorm? Paimon's gonna get blown away. Nah, it's fine. Another sandstorm? What's up with these recently? Hey! All of you, over here, quickly! We have to take cover! Ah! Candace! Someone's calling for us! Oh, this wind is too strong! Let's, come here, quick! Let's get over there! Doggo! That sounded like Candace! Or a tree smecking me, Stellanese Cardinal! Jeez, are all of you academia folks? Yeah, don't worry, I summoned her! <laughs> Move it! Hi, Lux. Right, stop being stop a brat. Yelling. Stop being a brat, dog. <laughs> stop being a brat. I did summon Farina. I, I did summon her. I, I needed the Hydro Archon. She's too adorable. I like how Sino's standing over there like an asshole. He won't sit down at the table. He's over there by himself like a prick. It's like, fuck you. I'm gonna stand over here. Just because we have to hide in the same building doesn't mean I have to be near you. Are we all just gonna sit here and stare at each other angrily now? <laughs> well, Paimon lost the quiet game. Sardines with three people who want to tear each other limb from limb? <laughs> sure, why not? Sounds fun. Uh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can hardly keep floating anymore. Is she gonna land? My sincere apologies, everyone. Ah, uh, wife. This is the home of our village chief. I will have to ask you to make do with this small room until the sandstorm dies down. She's so hot. Please, let me introduce myself. I am Candace, protector of Aru Village. You're so hot. Ah, our savior has come at last. She's... Nice to meet you, Candace. The name's Paimon. Thank you so much for helping us. She's so hot. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. It's only right to help each other when the weather gets rough. 
Well, you say that, but that's not usually the response I get. Gentle and caring, like a nice older sister. I'm like those guys over there. She could be my older right. sister. Now that we're all better acquainted, we should return to the topic at hand. As a guardian charged with the responsibility. Oh, yeah, you do have Hediochromia. I forgot you did. Harm. I was observing your conflict. You wish you had anime Hediochromia where it looks really dramatic, like that, where it's gold and blue. And now that you have set foot within our village itself, it is all the more my responsibility. Anime makes to everything look cooler. Sure that you pose no threat whatsoever to us. I also <laughs> want anime Hediochromia. Sincere conversation with one. If I had one eye gold and one eye blue, it'd be sick. <laughs> Or one eye red and one eye white or something. Again while they are under this roof, or one eye purple. I will not hesitate to send them out for some quality time with the creatures of the sandstorm. There are creatures in the sandstorm? Oh, uh, on second thought, Paimon may have misjudged Candace's character. I don't know, I think she's hotter when she's pissed. And that goes for you too, Miss Dia. Do uh, I make myself clear? Dia got scolded too. Everyone's getting scolded by Candace. <sighs> Alright, we got it, Candace. Yes, Mommy. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, which of you will begin? All right, so I'm an alien. I was supposed to be a mediator, <laughs> but uh, I might have gotten a little too involved Locks just now. Quit. Anyway, one of those two should probably start talking. One of those two. That was you trying to be a mediator? Dia, you're really bad at the peaceful thing. I have nothing to hide, so there's no shame in explaining myself. Okay, grumpy dog boy. Oh, Haytham wasn't wrong about the other Matra not knowing my whereabouts. It's not because I've been assigned a morally dubious mission. Rather, I've chosen to exile myself. How emo? Huh? Exile yourself? Is it because you're emo? A little while ago, I discovered that there was data missing in the Academia's project planning and development files. What little they did report clearly did not match the project's actual progress. As General Mahamatra, I had the responsibility and authority to request an audit. However, to my surprise, the person responsible for the erroneous data was none other than Grand Sage Azar himself. I tried to investigate the issue myself before submitting a formal audit request, but I soon found that all leads and potential pieces of incriminating evidence were carefully concealed from me. Oh, so you found I out the people you work for are corrupt. They were cautious of me from the very beginning. So you realize the organization you're part of is corrupt. The Grand Sage rejected my audit request as soon as the submission reached his desk. He even said to me, The power of the General Mahamatra is granted by the Sages. You have no right to judge us. So you quit. Hmm. So they really are up to no good. I realized then that to the Grand Sage, the Matra are nothing more than tools for the Sages to assert and maintain their control over knowledge. Okay, so you got mad at Quinn. The vows that we took, the principles that we strive to uphold, they are meaningless to the academia of today. So you found out they're corrupt, you got mad and quit, now you're hunting them for sport. I would do that. That's valid. I believed it would be wise to flee the academia before the Sages had a chance to take action against me. This way, they can no longer see nor predict my actions. That's fair. I will never give up on this investigation. There's no need for someone else to give me power or authority. Once I find the truth, I will administer judgment by my own name. Give me like Tyrael vibes from Diablo where it's like, you could not judge me for I am justice itself. Give me Diablo vibes. Plus, now that he's no longer the General Mahamatra, he somehow feels a lot less scary. Paimon, you didn't know he was the General Mahamatra until five minutes ago. And then he now is not the General Mahamatra. You should still be scared of him because he's twice your size with a big pointy stick. What if the whole story was made up? Yeah, he made up that whole story. I know. If that's your story, then why did you see I'll hate them as a target? Because I'll hate them as a prick. When I was investigating the matter in the academia, I overheard a conversation between all Haytham and a sage. Oh? The sages asked you to investigate a blonde-haired traveler. Do you dispute this, all Haytham? Well, time to kill all Haytham. Uh, what? Well, time to kill him. Like many parts of the project, this assignment was undocumented. 
Now throw in your suspicious behavior with the Divine Knowledge Capsule, and I think we deserve an explanation. The sages were spying on me. I'm gonna kill them all. Hmm. Yes. I was indeed tasked with investigating the Traveler. So you weren't my homie after all. I thought we were homies. After we bonded. All, the promised reward was so great that hardly any scholar could have refused. The sage told me, once you've completed this assignment, I can give you a glimpse of divine knowledge. I thought we were homies. The most enticing offer. Unfortunately, those academics don't know me at all. Their words contain one key piece of information. Namely, that divine knowledge indeed exists. That gave me all I needed to know. I love that that's what he took out of from the conversation with them. The sages are far from trustworthy. Think about it. Isn't it a little strange they're so willing to share divine knowledge with anyone, even as a reward? So, I began my own investigation following the lead of the divine knowledge capsule. In the end, I realized my wisdom in committing to this rather than collaborating with the sages. Had I been less guarded, I probably would have ended up like that Einal Achmar mercenary, incapable of remaining sane for long enough to hold a conversation. You mean... That the sages originally planned to dispose of you, using one of those capsules that drive people insane? This is like I betrayed you, and I counter betrayed you, and I counter counter betrayed you, and I counter counter betrayed your betrayal. Why is Sumeru a mess? I'd already given up on the assignment by then. I only told the academia I was waiting in Port Ormos for you to appear so they wouldn't suspect anything. So it came as quite a surprise when I encountered my erstwhile target while investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. So it was Criminals just a weird coincidence? To talk about coincidences. Criminals do love to talk about coincidences? That's funny. I had no intention of providing assistance to the academia. Also, you should remember, you were the ones who decided to follow me and strike up a conversation after I left that tavern. Alright, you got me there. That's true. Oh, Haytham helped us out at Caravan Rebot as well. Maybe he's telling the truth. So no one's the bad I'm guy. I'm to apologize, if that's worth anything to you. No, it's really not. I, I don't took the divine fuck. knowledge capsule behind your back because I judged its existence to be a significant risk. I felt that it would be best for no one to interact with it before it had been properly studied. Well, it did drive that guy insane. <laughs> After all, curiosity often proves to be the most dangerous thing in this land. Oh, it is the land of wisdom. You should be well aware, scribe Ahatham. That curiosity can also lead you to danger and suspicion. Answer me this. Did the sages share any information about their project with you? Have I not made myself clear? You and I are both distrusted by the academia. Do you really think they would tell me anything? Fine. Although you haven't completely proven your innocence, I won't regard you as an enemy. For now. Sino's so funny. As you wish. Sino's like, I'll stab you later. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad to see you two clearing up your misunderstandings. She sounds like a mom. <laughs> and now you, Dia. I believe it's your turn. Children oh, behave. Sorry. Whatever the boys were talking about must have been so boring that I spaced out. Damn, savage. <clears throat> My situation is pretty straightforward. My employer, Dunyarzad of the Homiyani family, is friends with the Traveler and is currently recovering from her illness at home. I had nothing going on, so I decided to return to Aru Village for a visit. I was actually looking forward I also like to her. a pretty exciting time getting back She's together great. with everyone here. But then I saw these two random guys in the middle of a pointless argument. It ticked me off, and things went downhill from it there. It ticked me off! <laughs> Is that all? Well... I will admit that definitely sounds like your style. In that case, welcome back, dear. I wish I had Candace summoned. That's more like it. I missed you all so much, Candace. What the fuck? What was that? Oh, what was that sound? I wrote this game. No need to worry. Now that you're no longer at each other's throats, please make yourselves at home. I'll take a quick trip outside to clear out some of those creatures in the sandstorm. She's just gonna go casually murder monsters? Creatures? In the sandstorm? Uh, are you sure you don't want some backup? Can I play as her? Fighting in a sandstorm is not for the faint-hearted. Anyone without extensive training in these conditions is at a disadvantage. I'd be fine. You needn't worry. 
I'll be fine. Can I join you, please? Yeah, just leave him to Candace. <laughs> Don't worry. She's as tough as they come. She's only a four star. Do I have to say it? No, I want to play as her, damn it. I want to go fight the monsters in the sandstorm. Died down. That means the sandstorm's over, right? Damn it. Candace still isn't back yet, though. Is she all right? Maybe we should go out and check on her. When you put it that way, even I'm starting to feel a little worried. All right, let's go. We've been here long enough, and the boys are as chatty as the floor. I like that these two are still pouting, refusing to talk. No, Candace! Wife! I must save Candace. Let me in. Let me in! Candace. Candace. Whee! Well, I don't see any dead bodies. Whee! Oh, doggos. Candace, I'm here to help with murder. I'm really good at murder. I'm here to help. Candace, you're still fighting? Damn it. You've been out here dealing with these creatures the entire time? I wanted to help. Yes. They just keep coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. <laughs> Her stamina is something else, A.O. <laughs> Here comes another wave! Yes, do I get to help? <laughs> Leave this round to us. No! I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. Let me do it! <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you, then. I want to do it. I'll be sure to put on a good show. <laughs> oh, good. I get to help this time. At least Dio let me help. But that means I don't get to play as Candace. Dumb. Oh, I'm fine. Side effects. Seems like an emergency. Echo and song! Excalibur! Leave it all to me. I'll catch up. Die, doggy, die! Bring more! I want more! A bitter pill to swap. More! Mind the side effects. Damn it, I wasn't done yet. I wasn't done yet. What we fought just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. Sandstorm seemed fun. Well fought, everyone. No injuries, I hope. Grandpa! I don't know who this is. I'm just assuming he's Grandpa. Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. Are you not one of the elderly? I am the chief of Aru Village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. <laughs> I would die for Uncle Anpu. Sir, I am also originally from the desert, but I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? I can't say they've always been common, uh, but recently the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes. Uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermensol. Oh, that's not good. Mm. Another effect of Ermensol's weathering. So, Ermensol's weathering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Ermensol. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Ermensol's present state. Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village keeper? Who are they? Village guards like Candace? Does your curiosity know no bounds? Village Keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars, exiled here by the Academia. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity, 
after a period of training in the Avidia forest. Oh. The academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. So all these people, like, spend their whole life doing weird hallucinogenic drugs out in the forest to, to peer into the urban soul, and then eventually it drives them crazy, and then everyone else banishes them to the desert because watching your coworkers have their brain dribble out of their ears is negative vibes. It's a negative vibe check for everyone else. That That's shocking. <laughs> Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. Those people. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. Mock me if you will. But if you are guilty, I will eliminate you. Regardless of my position or identity. <laughs> I love that Sino's like a foot shorter than El Haytham, so he has to like look up at him to threaten him. <laughs> oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. I'll be grateful for the assistance. No doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far. I love that Sayu's in this game. Where's the teleporter? Is not what I wanted. How do I get up there? I want the teleporter. Touch. Though I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru Village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. Mysterious when phenomenon. mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Oh, so there's Initially, actually some logic. The people of Aru Village greatly resented having to take in the Mad Scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him. The then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, 
The people of Aru Village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness and began to refer to them as the village keepers. Well then. A soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm. What do you make of it, Traveler? Paimon thinks so too. Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the mad scholars continued to wear their Akasha terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. Yeah, so Nahida was helping if them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. Yeah, I hang out with the Dendro Archon so, sometimes. what do you make of the story? I hang out with the Dendro Archon and she's really nice. Really? Master Lord Kusanami. Hmm. What? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon, is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Rukadevata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali. And I've never had any reason to doubt their views. Yeah, well, you shoulda. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. Yeah, well, she kind of feels the no same way. way. Nahida definitely exists. She's a... How should Paimon put it? She's a good archon who's kind and wise. <coughs> Even if she says ah. weird stuff sometimes. I've spent many years interrogating criminals, so I can easily tell when someone is lying. Okay. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes. I've never seen that from a liar. Because I'm not lying! You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. A lie! How can this be? <laughs> to think. <laughs> the fucking Our fart. You must have met her, this fart! Entire time. <laughs> Alright, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. I didn't know Sino had gas. But easier said than done. Especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. Maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Just start breaking down walls like Kool-Aid Man. Kool-Aid's here! Excuse me, uh, are you here to help me find my grandpa? I am now. What? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. No, really? I thought he was the My president. name is Isak. Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Sure, why not? Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. Does he have the dementia? <sighs> The person you're referring to is not a local. Yet you are. Why do you call him Grandpa? Grandpa is just Grandpa. He's my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I wanna find my Grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah. So you're My little cold heart is dropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was, but I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor. I love that this intent. small child has adopted a crazy yeah. may old man. Oh, I even wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid. All he wants is to find his grandpa. Let's find a way to help him. No. Sorry. I was only listening in because I wanted to know where Grandpa went. Honest. If you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candice. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candice. Come on, Sino, smell out the fucking fart. God damn it. Eh. 
Candace, can you vouch for this small child? Is this small child the enemy I've been looking for? Do I have to kill this small child? Zino is super vigilant. Is this what all the Matra are like? Ah, you're back already. Hi, Candace. We just wanted to confirm something. We've accomplished nothing. Do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> I had a feeling he'd go looking for you. The transition? It was a great transition. You knew this would happen? Shh, it's every time I transform. Yes. Although he tried his best to stay hidden, I still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window. He really wants to get his grandfather back. Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. His parents didn't come back after that, huh? Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. He spied on him? However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. Oh, well now this got sad. One summer night, the oft mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So Grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his grandpa again, only to realize his grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, Grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his Grandpa was able to find peace, and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, want me to take you somewhere fun? Or, Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? This is just sad now. All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. I wrote this game. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. God, you're so hot. Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Yeah, Nahid is great. What did you say, Sino? Nahid is great. You no, all don't deserve nothing. her. No one in this country deserves Nahida. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. He cute songs Please like that. Please accept my thanks on Esau's behalf, Sino. Yeah, I need to edit the sounds more often. I forgot how originally. I need to do it more often. In, in fairness, I never thought I'd play games that had moments like this. Most of the games I play are dumb. I didn't expect to have moments like this. We've cleared everything up. Let's go find your grandpa. Really? Wow. Thank you so much. Well, don't thank me until I find him. Hopefully not dead. Don't promise the child I'll find him safe and sound. Now he's gonna be dead. Let's ask the local residents some questions first. Don't promise things I can't make. Listen, I didn't expect. This is a gotcha game. I didn't know how much story Genshin Impact had when I started playing it. It's a gotcha game. I expected. I expected boobs. I didn't come here expecting a weird storyline of a god imprisoned by her own people but still trying to help them. And madness and the desert. I didn't expect that. It's a gotcha game. I thought it'd be boobs. Excuse me. Did you happen to see where the missing 
scholars win? Hey, that's because I don't do the grinding on screen. Maybe There's play you, gameplay. Village keepers? Oh, let me think. When I, was eating I admit, Sumero day, is mostly story and no gameplay. Sumero is kind of killing me because it's like all it's like a movie. Eating mushrooms and tree roots. I shouldn't go around eating that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Eating mushrooms uh, and tree roots. Anything else? Anything else? Hmm. No, I think that's all I have to tell you. Sorry. He just walks off. All right. See you later, fuckers. Well, that was useful. Hey, have you seen a crazy old man? The scholars that have gone missing. Have you seen them? Fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> Those fierce eyes. Those fierce eyes. You look like a real fighter. I mean, Sino is a real fighter. Don't change the subject. Sino, stop interrogating <laughs> innocent people! You were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. But honestly, I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. Do you also think Grandpa and the others are good people? Grandpa? Oh, hello there. It's little Isak. <laughs> I sleep all day. I don't see shit. Long lost twin, right? <laughs> I go night night all day. He was actually the one who protected my house. I saw it with my own eyes. He happened to be staying near my house that day and was doing something with his hands on the ground. It still feels pretty surreal now that I think back on it. Did someone teach them how to do that? Yeah, God. Well, whatever the case, I'll always be thankful to him and whoever taught him to look out for others. Nahida. I'm pretty sure that if I ever went mad, I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. Gotcha. Thank you. Pro, I sleep all day. I do. And she's just like, I go to bed super early. I love sleep. She's like, I don't know anything. I love sleep. Where am I going? Yeah, Sumer you're not wrong, though. Sumero is, like, mostly cutscenes for some reason. Because, like, the game has gameplay. It's just Sumero's all cutscenes. If I was mentally ill, I wouldn't do shit. If I was mentally ill, I also pro I would probably become all of the problem and none of the solution. Uh, sir, have you seen my grandpa recently? You know, the one who likes to sit and space out near the village entrance. Isn't that all the crazy oh, people? Well, if it isn't Isak. Oh, your grandpa, huh? Dude, that guy's. Hmm, I'm not mentally ill. In a while. The last time I saw I'm him, I'm fucking perfect. He was spacing out by the road as usual. I went and asked him if he'd like any of the food I had prepared, despite my wife's protests. Like many people, she's really quite terrified of them. I'm not mentally ill, I just dress up as a dinosaur boy on the internet. She's still always complaining about how I don't make enough mora. I might explain why she's always mad. Oh, uh, dude, divorce your wife, she sounds like a oh, bitch. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of him. This guy used to divorce <laughs> his wife. <laughs> hey, you're looking for him, right? Did he go for a walk and get lost? Why are you married to your bitch wife? You gave food to like the crazy homeless man who kind of protects the village and your wife's like, fuck you, make more money. Why are you married to her? <laughs> Homie. Demand better for yourself. Divorce that bitch. Yeah. Ooh, that's no good. Well, once you found him, Come by my place again, and I'll cook a little something for the both of you. I've known you since you were very young. So as far as I'm concerned, you're family. Please feel free to come by any time. This guy is such a good guy! Why is he married to a bitch? His, else, his beard is also awesome. Why are you married to such a selfish asshole when you seem like such a cool dude? Oh, Sino, what is it? What is it, Sino? What do you smell, boy? Don't say anything for now. Okay, I'm sorry. Isak, stay here. Sino Let's heard something. There. Stay quiet as you move. I'm not a ninja, though. King Deshrot and the Three Magi. When did this turn into Aladdin? It's okay. Don't worry. Follow Sino, but Sino's not here. Why is he walk quieter? Sino's gonna yell at me. It was at this moment that he knew. 
He fucked up. Sino, how'd you get down there so- I'm so quiet. Sino, look how quiet I am! Oh. Listen, see if you can make out what they're saying. Have but you heard? The mighty King Deshrit, the sovereign of our faith, will soon return to this world. Oh, not this religious bullshit again. Yes, of course I have. King Deshret is the one and only true ruler of this land. I've never believed in any other gods. No, Nahida's the Dendro Archon! You say he's coming back, but... It sure doesn't feel like life's about to change around here anytime soon. What's your proof? Haven't you noticed? The village has been getting more deranged scholars than ever. Delavar was saying that many people also went insane just before the fall of King Deshret's civilization in ancient times. We don't quite know why, but it seems like there's some sort of connection between insanity and King Deshret. That sounds bad! Isn't it a sign of King Deshret's power that all the mad scholars have disappeared? If you ask me, they must have been chosen as the final sacrifice for King Deshret's resurrection. Oh good, we're gonna sacrifice the homeless people. Now that you say it, that does make some sense. <laughs> does this mean our lives are finally going to take a turn for the better? Exactly. Those city folks will get what's coming to them. Now, repeat everything you've just said from the very beginning. <laughs> I love Sino! Huh? <laughs> Sino's fucking great! Who you? Where did you come from? Do what the dog boy says. My patience is running thin. Oh! You heard what I asked. Oh! Oh, shit! <laughs> Finally, a character who handles things how I would handle it! B bro! This guy's Bro! Like Just look at his eyes. One wrong move, and he's gonna flay us alive. Bro! Let's look on his bad side, okay? I am no match for this guy. Why don't we always oh, solve problems please, like this? Sir? What is it you would like to know? Tell me about King Deshret's resurrection. Well, I... I only know a few things from hearsay. I went for a drink the other day, and heard others talking about a rumor that the madmen will disappear, and that King Deshret will return to this land. I'm not making this up, I swear! <sighs> I fucking love Sino. Hey, go on, keep talking. It's true. It's all true, sir. We desert folk have had more than enough of those people at the academia. They keep sending us all their mad scholars and won't let us have a good life. Would you want to live like this if you were in our place? The radicals were even more thrilled than me when they heard the news. We're all praying for King Deshret's speedy return. Delavar also said that once King Deshret returns to our side, it's only a matter of time before we conquer the land on the other side of the wall. They're all willing to serve under King Deshret and fight for a share of the glory. Glory! Is that so? Oh, Sino's mad. Uh, seems like he still wants to know more. Keep talking. Ah, uh, got it. I, uh, at first, I told myself it was just the drink talking. But then all the mad scholars vanished without a trace, just as the rumor said. Please, don't beat me up just for mentioning these rumors. I if I'm guilty, then everyone else around here is also guilty. I'm just saying what the others said. I mean, Sino will probably beat up everybody. I really like King Deshret, but dislike the Dendro Archon. Where is this radical person you talked about? I haven't run into him over the past few days, so he probably hasn't been around the village. What about you, man? Have you seen him at all? No, uh, not at all. We wouldn't dare lie to you. He's really not here right now. Sounds like you're not too close with the radicals. Uh, no, uh, of course not. All we know are their names. Then give me their names. I have many ways to stop you from talking. And many others to stop you from sending warning messages. So you'd best just stay home and hope I don't hear of you trying to contact anybody. Don't do anything until I've gotten to the bottom of this. Try something foolish, and even Candace won't be able to protect you. Yes, yes, got it. We'll do just as you say. <laughs> I fucking love Sino! <laughs> Let's get blame on him today! Sino is pretty bad. <laughs> I fucking love Sino. Why don't we always solve problems like that? He just flashed a little bit of lightning and everyone shit their pants. Why don't we always do it that way? Hmm. He didn't try to reassure us at all. It's like he's used to hearing that. Well, Paimon bets lots of people have told him that before. 
I heard that. <laughs> Sorry. It's part of being a Matra. Uh. The rumor we heard just now seems like a strong lead. But we need to check a few more places. Very well. Isaac! Uh, I'm here! Where's your grandpa's house? He has a house? Well, I can take you there. Just follow me. I thought the bad scholars just kind of wandered around the town and they like herded them somewhere at night. I didn't know he had a house. Lead the way, small child. Isak, walk faster. This must be it, right? Isak, walk faster. Isak, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Move. Grandpa, oh, he likes to be alone. Uh, sometimes he stares at the sky in a daze and other times he just pokes at the ground with his fingers. Every now and then, he yells out at the top of his lungs, so a lot of people are really scared of him. But he's a good person, really. I know he is. I swear, he's just like my real grandpa. Your real grandpa's dead. Child, your, your real grandfather is dead. He's super dead. You have what's called trauma. Where Grandpa usually stays. That's a tent. There sure isn't much here. What's that smell? I don't want to know what that smell is. No. Incense. Uh, please don't say it's the same one as before. Oh, I get to do drugs again. Are you okay? Are you getting dizzy or need to lie down? Am I gonna do drugs again? There's a scent that you can sense, but I can't. Yeah, and you're part dog. A certain traveler here once passed out from that smell. Thankfully, Tymeri saved the day! And then he gave us a long lecture to explain all about how it worked. So, you know Tainari. I do know your boyfriend. Huh? You know him too? Are you two friends? They're boyfriends. Yes. Hmm. I like how he didn't elaborate, he just said yes! I can also make up the scent of incense. <laughs> he just said yes or didn't say Surely shit! Surely Tainari didn't lecture you uh, too. No. No need. <laughs> he just... Oh, uh, that's so funny. He literally just went yes and didn't elaborate at all. Do you know Tainari? Yes. Did you first encounter this scent at Tainari's house? Kinda. Technically, I was in the forest. In the forest. From a scholar. I didn't mean to do that! Well... I want the Dendro thing. Aha! <laughs> Who the fuck just wanna go? Nice and spicy. No, stop it. Steady as stone. Up the cliff. Excalibur! I'll catch up. Shower me with praise. God, why is Furia in such a mood? Side 
nasty. Best give it a spring cleaning. Okay. Well, man, I got thoroughly distracted by that. Into the abyss! Hmm. Yes, Doggo? What did you find? What are you looking for, Sino? Here it is. Drugs? Take a look right here. Dirt! I knew it! Uh, doesn't see anything. Although the traces have been completely buried in the sand, there are footprints here. From the size and shape. They belong to an adult male. This pattern is a common one from this area. Local shoes. This was probably someone from the village. The scent is quite faint, but still extant. The footprints head in that direction. But who would come looking for Grandpa? He doesn't have any friends. Savage. We'd have to ask whoever lured him away with the incense. Huh? So you can lure someone away with just a scent? You get lured away by food all the time! Hey! What's wrong with liking good food? Everyone's got something they love in life! Exactly. Most scholars are fond of incense, since the smell supposedly helps them clear their minds and discover new knowledge. And they like to forge my blazes? deep within the clutches of madness, they still yearn for their knowledge-seeking days, and will follow the scent whenever it presents itself. No, Grandpa. So, someone's taking advantage of their weakness? Huh. Still, why would anyone want to abduct all the scholars? Are the rumors really true? Could the disappearance of all the mad scholars have something to do with the radicals? We have to kill them all. It's highly likely. Please, you have to save my Grandpa. Grandpa's never done anything wrong. Please help him. Well, he's probably done Grandpa's things wrong. You just probably don't know about back. it. Don't you worry, Isak. We won't let whoever took him get away with it. Let's head to Aru Village and inform Candace and the others about what we learned here. After that, we'll set off to find the scholars. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Right. The darker fabric definitely looks a lot better. That'd be my choice, too. Welcome back. The tiny wave. <laughs> Sounds like everyone's friends already. Oh, Dia's here too! You bet. So, everything goes smoothly? Reasonably. Hmm? I'll hate them didn't go with you? We haven't seen him at all. Huh. I saw him around the village entrance earlier and figured he was investigating with you. I guess he must have gone off on his own. Yeah, he does that a lot. Did you find out anything useful? He's a lone wolf. Anything useful. We'll define useful. I see. So someone used a kind of incense to lead the exiled scholars away from the village. Yeah, it's pretty fucked the up. The resurrection of King Deshret? First I've heard of it. As far as I know, the kind of incense you just mentioned is only popular beyond the wall. Scholars are fond of it, but as you can see, there aren't many scholars still studying around these parts. No seller would be able to make a profit here. Not to mention making incense is a labor-intensive process. 
You won't see anybody in the desert with the patience to make or sell something that requires that kind of effort. It seems someone from beyond the wall must have been supporting this. Makes sense. Hmm. So what should we do then? Do we go back to the Academia and search for leads there? If it was any other day, that would be your next logical step. But today, you've got me on your team, so you get an extra tip. Thank you, Dia. Didn't you say that the villager got his news from the tavern? Well, I also like to drink at the tavern, so I know a thing or two about these radicals he mentioned. Oh? If Paimon remembers correctly, the leader of the radicals is some guy called Delavar. Ah, yeah. Delavar, the scar-riddled bandit, Enger, the wide-eyed butcher, and Jabari, the ducktail bearded crook. The whole lot of them are known around these parts. These guys have one thing in common, and that's being broke. The rougher life gets, the more they want to believe in King Deshret. Way they see it, King Deshret's resurrection is their only chance at overthrowing the Academia. Makes sense. Throwing all of Sumeru into chaos is the only way to change the way of life here in the desert. Anyway, that's my guess why they've chosen to become radicals. Tia! You're amazing! You really know this place inside and out! <laughs> no merc can afford to slack off on gathering intelligence. Every more I've spent in the tavern has been a valuable investment. Let's head out. Now hold on, you're staying right here, Sino. Why? Aru Village is not a big place. Outsiders stand out here like a sore thumb. I'd bet word about you has already gotten out. The desert is unforgiving, so the way of life here is also a lot tougher than on the outside of the wall. You survive on making connections out here. T compared to you, mercs like me are just third-rate amateurs. I've got no actual fighting skills to speak of. But that also makes it a whole lot easier for me to gain the locals' trust. I need to go around and ask some questions. But it'll be difficult if you're with me. <sighs> Fine. Good. Then we've got a plan. The Traveler and Paimon will go to Caravan Rebot with me, and we'll try our best to figure out where the Mad Scholars have been taken. Sino, you'll have to stay in the village and continue investigating on your own. Alright! Sounds like a plan! We're being spied on. Where am I going? That way. <gasps> Yeet! No, come back. Quicksand eel. Fuck yeah. All in a day's work. A chest. Look at him sleeping. Tactical nuke! Remember. Little dusty. 
Just give it a spring cleaning. That was totally necessary. I don't know what anyone's talking about. They definitely deserved every ultimate I had. Sounds like you're starting to get familiar with the area. Paimon's amazed every time we see the wall of Samiel. How can a wall this tall even exist? It's almost unreal. I know what you mean. I had the same question every time I walked this way when I was a kid. Also, why is this high wall here? And can a wall really block sandstorms? I mean, yeah, it was it's only big after enough. I grew up that I realized. The wall of Samiel isn't just there to keep out the sandstorms. It serves a more important purpose, keeping out people like us. I don't think that's what the Sumeru Archon meant. Samaru is run by wise and mighty sages. To them, us desert dwellers are nothing but tools that can be used and discarded at their whim. We're cheap labor, like livestock, but easier to control. Nothing more. Even if a child from the desert got the chance to obtain an Akasha terminal, Almost all their requests for knowledge would be denied. The Academia believes we're underserving. Geniuses like Sataria are one in a million. The other children never get a single chance to try and rewrite their fate. Even though the Academia knows very well that we're humans, just as they are. Humans. I would tear down this wall with my own hands if I could. Hey, Dia. Uh, you're not thinking about doing anything scary, are you? Uh, no, not at all. This place just gets me thinking, that's all. Besides, we're here to procure information, aren't we? Yep, we gotta catch those... Shh. Caravan Rebot is crawling with people, so be careful what you say. We don't want anyone to find out what we're here for. Our mission started the moment we arrived here. Let's go check out the tavern. Maybe we'll find someone I know. Now you're just somebody that I used to know. Just our luck. None of them are here today. You mean, you don't see anyone you know? Dia, is that you? <laughs> what a coincidence. You here for a drink too? Hmm? Zaki? <laughs> Finally, a friendly face. Oh, and who do you have with you here? Guests from another land? Oh. Hello, hello. I'm Zaki. Dia's, uh, how would you put it? Drinking buddy? <laughs> We've had drinks together a few times. You could say we go back a ways. Anyway, as far as my friends here, they aren't too shabby, are they? You rarely see any outlander so friendly and respectful nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than those people on the other side of the wall. So, Dia, are you looking for someone? Yeah. Have you seen Enger, Delavar, or Jabari recently? Of course I have. Matter of fact, we were all here drinking together just a few days ago. I've got a spice trading deal from another nation. I thought maybe Delavar and his friends might be interested. Know where I could find him? Ah, how thoughtful of you. 
Then I assume you also know that Delavar's been having a hard time making ends meet these days. So, you came here to help him out? Hey, keep it down. Let's just say I prefer to keep this deal a secret. Y'all at Caravan Rebot are like family. If there's more to be made, why not do it together? Besides, Delavar and his friends have muscle. They'd be a good fit for escorting the goods. <laughs> yes, how considerate of you. Delavar's my friend too, so of course I can take you to him. Come with me. They're just lying to be his friends openly. This is gonna be a fucking ambush. <clears throat> Are we there yet? I'm tired. Yep. This is the place. This place is practically deserted. What are they doing in a place like this? <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Why don't you take a guess? Go on. A wild stab in the dark. <laughs> I'm good. How are you, man? You're like lambs to the slaughter. No, I think you're lambs to slaughter here. Uh. I'm going to beat you all up. Oh, no! It's an ambush! Oh, no. Four guys. Whatever will I do? Uh, what's this all about, Zaki? I know. Five guys. Come on, Dia. You really think we didn't hear about what you said back in Aru Village? The boys have kept a close eye on you from the moment you set foot there. Well, time to kill everyone. Not only do I know that you're looking for Delavar, I also know that you've teamed up with people from the Academia to look for the missing scholars. So, you've been watching us from the very beginning? Uh-oh. I'm a new leaving Sino behind was a mistake. <laughs> and you left the strongest one in the village, didn't you? Who do you think you are? You really thought we'd fall for your little business deal nonsense? I mean, you are pretty dumb, it seems like, so... So you and Delavar have been partners all along. <laughs> Dia, I guess it's only natural for a traveling mercenary like you to be out of the loop. Those of us who hang around the tavern have stronger bonds than you think. But you got one thing right. We're all looking forward to an uprising in Sumeru. There's nothing more we'd like to see than the desert folk overthrowing the Academia. If that's the case, then I'm sure Delavar wouldn't miss a second of it. I'll be honest with you. If it weren't for what you said in the village, your little monologue about the Wall of Samuel would have convinced me that you're one of us. Delavar. And Enger. You're here too, huh? Alright, let's beat him up. Long time no see, Miss Mercenary. You should have known the traitors are what us followers of King Deshret despise the most. Why do you talk like Dia, that? I thought that you, a fellow desert dweller, would understand why King Deshret is greater than the Dendro Archon. Little did I know, you don't deserve to join us. <laughs> yeah, gee, what a missed opportunity. Adopting radical views and kidnapping innocent scholars, all because of some baseless rumors. <laughs> Anything else I'm missing out on? See? There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. Oh, I You're hear- You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. Hi. As long as there's a profit to be made, welcome, welcome. anyone can become my friend. Enough talking! Get him! How are ya? Oh yes, please attack me. Please, <laughs> this'll be so just easy. as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, Traveler. Gladly, this will take five seconds. They should have brought more guys. Following order. New country. Nice and spicy. I'm good, thank you for asking. He's a good night, Excalibur. Excalibur! Seems like an emergency. Adapter. 
Echo and song! I'll catch up. Oh no, you guys are getting your asses beat. Oh no, they're all dead. Ah, uh, play again, Jim. How could you? So, what do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? How did you say it? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. First time here. I'm guessing your informant told First you here to be a competent merc with no real fighting skills. Correct? I mean, that is what I said after all. And of course, you would believe everything he reported. The only thing you know about me is that I'm a mercenary, but you've never seen me in action. Even though you heard we went to handle monsters together, you believed that Candace was the only one doing all the real fighting. That so-called flame main is just a fraud. She admitted it herself. She just uses her connections to gain the trust of others. That's what you thought, right? Ugh. You lied in the village because you figured that we'd have people watching you. And you were oh. stupid enough to fall for it. Nope. I figured as it's much a the first time it's a gotcha game. Play. So in a sense, it's the greatest you horror of all. So Gambling, but. Pathetic. Okay, that should be all of them. Nice. Whoa! So you've been planning this since we were in Aru Village? Now let's kill them. No task can be done without preparation. I just happened to notice a couple suspicious looking people while you were out investigating. Oh, but instead of catching them right away, you let them report back. Those two who were snooping around were just a couple small fries. If we want to get the real catch, we have to be patient and give it some time. Oh, you mean the funny names she mentioned back in Uncle Ampu's house? The Wide-Eyed Butcher, Scarborough Bandit, uh, um, Paimon can't remember them all. That's just a bunch of drunk talk. Enger and Delavar like to talk themselves up when they're drinking. Enger the Wide-Eyed Butcher and Delavar the Scar-Riddled Bandit are the nicknames they came up with for themselves. That's fucking hilarious. Alcohol has a way of making people share what they really think. So Enger and Delavar are always rambling in the tavern about how King Deshred is a superior deity. What about Zaki? He's just a numbskull who fell right into No, it's nothing track. like Doki Doki Zaki Literature Club at all. There's no horror, really. Wall. It's a fantasy game. The initial game. plan was to find Delavar first, and then try to track him down. The most I can compare Genshin to is literally like being a adventurer. Like, you literally join an adventurer's guild, and it's like the epitome of you being adventurer. That's what you wanted to ask when we were at Uncle Anpu's house, right? Jabari is one of the villagers you talked to. You know, the one who wanted to treat Isak and his grandpa to some food. Wait, so he's a radical too? No, he isn't. I just needed to tack on a random villager name to make the eavesdropper think that I was making some wild guesses based on my impressions. Ah, you're too kind. It was straight from the usual playbook, if I'm honest. So, that thing you were saying before, is it really true? Hmm? About what? About how mercenaries only care about Mora, and that anyone's a friend as long as there's a profit. I mean, kinda, yeah, so being a mercenary that is. That's what mercenaries are, Paimon. What makes you so sure? Uh. Dia, do you dislike the Dendro Archon like the other desert folk? <laughs> you two are pretty sharp. No, I don't have anything against the Dendro Archon. I've heard a lot of nice things about the Lesser Lord from Dunyarzad. I can understand her devotion and gratitude. Dunyarzad's just an ordinary person. There's no way a god would be so involved in the lives of everyday people, unless they were truly compassionate. I've begun to realize that the sages are behind everything that's happened recently. 
The Radical's blind belief in King Deshret, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy? It's all the Academia's trickery. But I see through it all. And unlike them, I can never be hostile towards anyone who's never done anything wrong. Dear. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village. Yep. Then we can execute them. This should be all of them. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I'll be in touch. Until then, please stand by. Candace, do you need any help? Candace will be okay on her own. I trust her, so you can too. She's been guarding Aru Village for quite some time now. If anyone is qualified to question the offenders, it's her. While I'm questioning them, why don't you pass some time by exploring the area? I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, Traveler. As for these idiots, let's just hope they live to see another day. Well, Sino might kill him. Well, in all actuality, that might be a, place, a good place to stop it now, because I've been streaming for a couple hours, and it's going to be dinner time soon, so yeah. I think I'm going to stop it there for today, at least, then we can pick it up at a later date. So, thank you guys for coming out, as always. I appreciate it. The Sumero Archon Quest is certainly taking a long time, but we will get through it and then get to go to Fontaine. But we will get through it eventually. But thank you guys for coming out, as always. I appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, chat.